Hey everyone, Hammer Dan here with Hammer Performance. Today we're going to show you how to put on the rocker box assembly. Kind of straightforward, but there's some critical things here that we need to uh, touch base on uh, as we do this. Again, kind of depending on the year of the bike or whatnot. Probably the most critical thing uh, that we need to do here is anytime we're putting on the rocker box assembly, A, we need to make sure we have the push rods in the proper location, and B, we need to make sure whichever cylinder we're doing, whether it's the front or rear to start, that we're at top dead center on the compression stroke when we put on the rocker box assembly. So let's get started here. We're going to go ahead and take a look at our push rods. We have two different lengths, a short and a long. Um, it's hard to read the, uh, the uh, exhaust there, but we have a 10.656 and a 10.696. So we're going to put the 656 in the intake, the longer one in the exhaust. Intakes are always going to be closest to each other in the center of the cylinders. The exhausts are going to be on the outside farthest away. Okay, just want to point that out when you put your push rods in. Spot check your push rods to make sure. Um, a lot of times you can actually notice if you set them on a flat table and take a look at which ones are longer and shorter in case you're dealing with the stock push rods as well. I know the stock ones come color coded as well. Okay, so just pay attention to that whether they're marked or not marked. The longer one goes in the exhaust and the shorter one in the intake. Okay, um, at this point we're going to put our single layered steel gaskets on. Um, just set them on there. If you have a later model bike or a Buell, make sure, this is very important, that you, you go ahead and put in your, uh, your temp sensor uh, in the rear head, okay? You don't want to forget that and put everything together and then realize you got to try to get it in there through the top of the rocker box. Um, so very important to make sure you put that on if you have a later model Sportster um, or a Buell or something of that nature that's fuel injected. Um, Okay, so uh, once we get our push rods in, we'll go ahead and stick the other ones in the other cylinder as well. Um, shorter in the intake, longer in the exhaust. And again, your bike is probably in its frame, um, forward into a lift, rear tire jacked up off the ground. So at that point in time, we need to now go ahead and rotate the motor over whichever cylinder we're gonna do. We'll start with the front. Um, so we want to make sure that when you go to put the rocker box base, the bottom base assembly with the rocker arms on there, that we're at top dead center on the compression stroke so that we're at the lowest point. Our lifters and push rods are at the lowest point on the cam lobe so that we have the shortest distance to go when we go ahead and assemble our, our base uh, to the head. Um, you don't want it anywhere along the, uh, the cam where, the, where things are sticking up really high because you'll have to really wrench down your fighting spring pressures and there's a, a, ch a good chance that you end up breaking bolts trying to tighten that thing all the way down to the head with such a big gap or distance because you're sitting on the lifters uh, somewhere on the upper part of the lifters. So we want to rotate them over to top dead center on the compression stroke to make sure we're at the lowest point on the cam lobes when we go ahead and stick the rocker box assembly on the rocker box base on there. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Uh, for you guys with a bike that's at home, fifth gear, no spark plugs in, just jockey the tire back and forth as you shift the gears into fifth. No spark plugs in, remove the spark plugs, makes it easy to go ahead and rotate the motor over. Um, in our situation here, I have a motor sprocket wrench uh, to go ahead and rotate the motor over. So what I like to do, there's two different ways of doing this. Uh, one, you can either watch or put your finger over your intake push rod, okay? Um, if you have the assembly set on there, you can watch that rocker arm, but we're gonna watch the intake push rod. And what we want is the piston all the way to the top after our intake push rod goes up and goes down or opens and closes. Okay, that's one way and I'll show you that way here. So as we see the exhaust open and close there, here comes our intake open and our intake closes. So at this point now, I can take a zip tie or a McDonald's straw, something somewhat soft. You don't want to do it, use a screwdriver because you can jam that screwdriver in there. But we're going to go ahead as we feel this piston come up. You see the zip tie moving up there. Okay, I'm setting it on the top of that piston there as it moves up. Up. Now I feel it going back down. So you can jockey the tire back the other way to get it where you want it. Okay somewhere right in there. Doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, piston all the way to the top after our intake push rod opens and closes. That's an easy way to get our fine top dead center on the compression stroke. The other way, we'll go ahead and mess this up. We'll rotate it forward. The other way here is to put your finger or a, th uh, a thumb over the spark plug hole, okay, as you rotate this, okay. 
and as you feel that compression blow your finger it'll suck your finger in as it sucks okay so now we feel it blowing our finger off okay now it's sucking in again and we see the exhaust opening exhaust is closing here comes our intake push rod our valves opening I feel it blowing my finger off as that opens now it's sucking in so now as our is our push rod goes all the way down I can feel it blowing my finger off so as I feel it blowing my finger off again straw in there zip tight straw and here it comes up starts to go back down I'm gonna back it up here a little bit to about right there okay Again, this doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be exact. We just want to make sure that we're on the back side of our cam lobe so we have our shortest distance as we go ahead and assemble our rocker box base assembly onto there. Okay, so make sure your bolts are clean. We're going to go ahead and set our rocker box base assembly on there. Um, <coughs> Ross, will you grab me the uh, red line assembly loop? <clears throat> so one thing we want to do here real quick before we put that base on is we're going to go ahead and um, put some dabs of assembly lube here on our push rods. Okay, so if you got a kit from us and you got the assembly lube, we can go ahead and dab each side just like that. Put it back down in there. Dab, dab. Put it back in there. Try not to make a mess like I did. Over here, I'm going to go ahead and just dab. Right back down in there. That should be enough for us when we go ahead and put our rocker arms on there. Okay, so once we do that, then we can go ahead and set our rocker box assembly on to the push rods there. Kind of align your gasket the best you can, at least temporarily. Blue Loctite, okay. We got any left in this bottle? Must be out of our blue Loctite. Backup stick. Okay, we do got a backup plan here. Do we have a stick? Bing. 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 There's our four big ones. Okay. We're going to put our four in. Now, keep in mind, sometimes on the earlier model Sportsters, we have longers and shorters of our bolts. These four are all the same, but you're going to want to check your lengths to make sure, because you can tell here on our rocker box assembly, this pad is a lot higher than these pads down in here. Okay, so they do, I know, on some of the earlier models, 91 to 03 that they do have some different length bolts. Make sure you're in your proper holes there with your gasket, okay, so that your gasket's on properly. As you can see here now, when we push down on this, that we don't have a long way to go here in our gap. So when we go ahead and tighten these bolts down, we're gonna be uh, not very far off from squishing it down. And again, the previous video right before this, we checked our push rod length um, to make sure that we had the proper length there for our, our hydraulic lifters. So you can go ahead and tighten these four big ones. Now, personal preference myself, um, I like to put in all of my bolts first before tightening anything down. So the next one are gonna be our three that go inside here. 
Okay, and I like to get those started. Just get them down there. Like that. And then the last two are going to be our Allens here. which go in the back corner on the left-hand side of the bike there. And we'll get those started. That way I know when I snug down my four big ones here that uh, my others are started and I won't have a chance of like stripping them out trying to get them going in there. So here we're gonna go ahead and just snug a little at a time as we go. Just basically we're snugging everything down as you can see when we have it at top dead center we're real close it snugs it right down to the base and our spring pressure is fighting our push rods or fighting our lifters and pushing our lifters down in there so and I'll just try and work the rest of these down there a little bit Maybe. okay so at this time, we need to go ahead and torque our four big bolts. We need an inch pound wrench. I think the four big ones call for 12 foot pounds, roughly right in there. I have an inch pound, so I'm doing 200 inch pounds on the four big bolts. And I think it's like 12 to 13 foot pounds. And I'm going to kitty corner this. Double check. And you could reference your manual for the exact. I believe we have these on our website. Um, you can check there as well. Okay, so we torque the four big ones down. Now we're going to go ahead and torque the three inners. And I like to torque those to 140 inch pounds. Hundred and forty right there. Double check. Okay, and these last ones in the corner, I like to do those at one ten. Again, spot check your manual. Be careful because we're going into aluminum into the heads, okay? We don't want to get too crazy here. I don't suggest going to the maximum numbers in the manual. Usually somewhere in the middle is safe. So there we have it, okay? So that one's on. We're going to go ahead and rotate the motor over to top dead center on the compression stroke on the other cylinder, but we're not going to do it quite yet. Here's a, at this point, this is a key spot here with a lot of people. This is where a lot of people make a mistake. Um, this is very, very important. A lot of guys are, oh, I got my rocker box assembly ready. Okay, I'm going to rotate the motor over to top dead center on the compression stroke on the other cylinder so I can put that rocker box assembly on. You can't do that. You have to let this sit, okay, for about 30 to 40 minutes, I suggest, okay, um, to let the lifters bleed down, okay? Your lifters are pumped up, they got oil in them, they're fighting to stay pumped up. You just assembled the rocker box assembly to try to push the push rods down into the lifters. The lifters aren't going down very easy, they're fighting back, so something's got to give. And what gives is your rocker arms go ahead and open up the, or your, your rocker arms open up the valves. Okay, so now your valves are sitting open. Okay, and until the spring pressure tries to close those valves in there, Okay, because we have our 100th hour preload, so we're trying to push down. We open our valves 100th hour or so. 
okay and they're going to slowly the spring pressure slowly going to try to close those valves which slowly pushes the push rods down into the lifters okay a lot of guys get anxious at this point and they want to rotate the motor over the top dead center on the compressed stroke on the other cylinder to get that rocker box assembly on and your valves are hanging open and so when you do that they're open a hundred thou more than they should be when you rotate the motor over and you go through top dead center uh the tdc uh overlap there both your valves open up and there's a good chance they either clip each other because they're open each one's open a hundred thou more than it should be or the valves hit the pistons and you end up bending valves Okay, so now you got bent valves, um, um, or they clip each other and they bend. You got to take the heads all off, replace the valves, and go through a lot of headache air. So this is very, very important at this point that we do not, okay, that we do not rotate the motor over right away. That we let things uh, settle and bleed down. So Ross, if you would grab a, a flashlight for me. Okay, so at this point we're going to go ahead and we're going to continue on with our top here. We're going to put our gasket in there, and then we're going to grab our other gasket here and put it on. So on the earlier model Sportsters, these gaskets can be kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. They don't want to sit in their channels really, really well. So pay attention. You may need to stretch them a little bit, okay, if it looks like they're sucked in and, and not sitting in their channels. This one actually sat in pretty good. Now, this next part's very important as well. If you got a Cometic top-end gasket kit from us for the earlier model Sportsters, the 91 to 03s or whatnot, you're going to want to change this umbrella valve. That's very important to get a lot of phone calls where guys are saying that they're, they're losing a lot of oil through their breather out of their intake and everything, and it's gushing oil and blowing oil out their filter and everything like that. Um, if they're, if they're passing a lot of oil through their breather holes here in the heads, um, up here, it's going past this breather. And being an older bike, if the bike is sat for a while, even though we have low miles, these umbrella valves will harden with heat after a period of time. And once they harden, they don't seal very well. So we get a lot of oil bypass through this and it ends up cutting out your breather holes up here in the heads through your breathers and either pouring out your external breather system or sending it back into the air cleaner, you know, carburetor assembly and sucking it in and then gooping up the top of your pistons and whatnot. So very important to change this out, okay? And then when we put this rocker box assembly on, make sure that these umbrella valves are gonna sit over your, your uh, breather holes or your heads right here, okay? These, you can mix them up and put this one on the back side and it's sitting back here and the front one on the back here. You can mix them up, right, where this one goes here. So we want to make sure that sits over our breather hole there. That's very, very important. We're going to just set that right down on there. Make sure your gasket is in and it's not popped out anywhere there. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and stick our next gasket on and put it down in the channel there. And again, sometimes you may have to stretch these gaskets just a little bit to make sure that they, if they come up a little small and they're not sitting in their channel properly. Okay, just like that. And then finally, we have our top cover. Now, on some of our performance packages, especially the higher performance packages, we may need to go ahead and clearance the rocker box assembly. So when you see that about clearance in the rocker box assembly, um, we've gone to using the beehive springs in the heads, okay, which, I mean, it helps us tenfold. The customer doesn't have to go in and clearance the, the bottom base outside area where the springs are there because it's a beehive spring we don't have a clearance issue there but what we do have a clearance issue on is the top cover okay and the top cover particularly over the rocker arms where the push rods come up so that push rod comes all the way up opens that rocker arm like this and this rocker arm may have a tendency to tap the top of the cover especially if we have high ratio rocker arms in there okay um, and especially if our push rod length ain't right, that type deal, there's a chance that it may come up. So we're going to want to go ahead with a, a die grinder, a Dremel, something of that nature, and clearance just these gaps right here in the corners next to the smaller bolts here. We're going to want to clearance that. Okay, as you can see, I've clearanced them here, but I've also taken a Sharpie magic marker and colored them. Okay, I do that for a reason. Um, for 
if we put this together, and we'll be able to spot check this when we rotate the motor over to see if our cover goes up and goes down, and if it touches at all or whatnot. But I like to color these for a reason, because down the road, if we start the motor and we think, for whatever reason, that we have a noise, that we don't know what it is, and are we tapping? Could we still be tapping because we didn't clearance enough? Something of that nature. We're able to then take off our cover and just flip it around and look at the Sharpie area and see if our rocker arm has gouged into the Sharpie area there rather than a shiny aluminum where that hits it. And you can't really tell if that's a grind mark or, or um, um, if that's an area that the rocker arm is hit in there. So good idea to Sharpie it. Um, that way, if for whatever reason we have a noise, we're trying to decipher if it may be hitting the top cover or whatnot, we can look and see. Okay? So, in your kit, you're going to get two different types of top seals. You're going to get a... You're going to get uh, some copper seals, and you're going to get these, like, nylon seals here. Okay? Um, we like using these better. Okay, they squeeze a lot better and seal a lot better than the copper washers. You can use both, and yes, they both do work. Okay, but this, this seal here works a lot better. So you'll want to go ahead and stick one on the four of your rocker cover bolts that you have. And again, I like to wash all my bolts off with brake clean to get all the old oil and everything off of them so they're dry. So when I put Loctite on, everything is good to go there. And we'll go ahead and put the four on these here as well. And we're doing this just to give us some time here as our rocker box assembly bleeds down, rocker arms bleed down, lifters bleed down. Okay, so a good check here is as we're sitting here and we're letting our lifters bleed down and everything, I don't recommend putting the manifold or throttle body on the bike or exhaust system, any of that nature, so that we can still look in there and see. If you take a flashlight, we can look in, into the port there and see that our valve is closed, okay? We can look in the exhaust over here on this side as well to make sure that we're closed, okay? And it looks pretty good to me. Looks like we're closed on both the intake and exhaust there, so, um, our lifters have bled down. Now I soaked our lifters, these are brand new lifters before I put them in there. So they may not be completely filled with oil, whatever the case may be. Um, the key is to spot check this and just to make sure that we are closed on our valves. When, we're, when we know for sure we are closed on our valves there, then we know we are good to go to rotate the motor over to the top dead center and the compression stroke on the other cylinder. So. With that being said, I'm going to do a quick check here, and we're going to hold this over the top like this, and then I'm going to go ahead and ask Ross to go ahead and grab our motor sprocket wrench there and turn it um, forward, and we're going to just see if we have any movement here. I don't think we hit there at all. We can take a look. I don't see anything. Go ahead and rotate that over one more time, Ross. Okay, I think we're good. So I think our cover is good on that one. So now we're going to go ahead and rotate over to top dead center on the compression stroke here on our front one. So let me get around to this side. And uh, we're going to watch our intake push rod here as we go ahead and rotate. Of course, now we're fighting spring pressure on the front. There goes our intake push rod up and down okay so we're going to grab the zip tie now this one may be a little bit difficult to find that top dead center because it's going to want to snap past it 
keep coming up here. See, now it went past it and went down. That's okay, we're gonna leave it right there. It just went down a little bit. Um, it's just where the spring pressure is um, through, the different, through the cams there. So we're gonna leave it right there. We know we're on our lowest point there. So now we're able to go ahead and take our rear assembly here, put it on the bike, make sure you put your temp sensor wire through the center of it set it on your push rods there get your gasket somewhat straight come over here glue like that set our four bolts in okay and again we're going to make sure we're in our gasket properly set that down So one other thing I'm going to point out here I think it's on the one that I just screwed in so um, one other thing to point out is we take a look at this and I'm going to unscrew this one here just to kind of show you because I thought I saw the mark there so um, you know, we get the question all the time, hey, my rocker box seems noisy. I don't know what's going on there. Um, um, you know, I, I, it sounds like I'm hitting, but then we look at the cover and the cover seems fine. It doesn't look like it's hitting the cover at all anywhere. Um, one of the culprits that we found out is if you take a look at this bolt, you see that circle? Smiley face high, smiley face low. You see that there? Okay. What happens is, is in the rocker arm, in the shaft, this, sha this, this bolt here and this bolt here, there's a U-shape cut out of the shaft. Let me show you one of these older shafts here. You can see this U-notch cut out there. Okay, you see that there? Okay, well this bolt rides by that shaft like this, okay, and that's what keeps this shaft from rotating. Okay, now sometimes we get some heat buildup in the motor to where um, the shaft swells, the, the steel expands uh, into the, the bushings, um, into the, the rocker arms, uh, whether the roller rockers are standards. And what happens is, is when that shaft expands, it kind of locks itself into that rocker arm. So as the rocker arm's going back and forth, opening and closing the valves, it's gripping that shaft and it's spinning that shaft as well. And what happens is that shaft rotates and it only can rotate so far until it hits that bolt and it hits the bolt and then it goes back up and hits the bolt the other way and stops and so it's the shaft is getting grabbed by the rocker arm and rotating that shaft so you get a ting 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 you get a ting ting sound and it's that shaft smacking that bolt um they they do make rocker lockers that is a um a piece that i believe goes in um, the bolt area there to keep that shaft from spinning which alleviates that noise so that's something to consider there taking a look at your bolts and looking at that uh, looking to see if you see the smiley faces on there then you know that with the shafts you have in there that the um, the, the, sh the bolt the shaft is hitting the bolt okay so that's something to, to keep an eye on there um, if you think you have a, a noise in the top of the rocker box there um, that you can't decipher, um, that's one possibility there. Okay, so before we snug those down, we're going to put all of our other bolts in with some blue Loctite. Get those four in the back. Get them started in there. Now, when you're doing the second rocker box assembly, whether it's the rear or front, whichever one you start with, 
Um, at that point, when you get this on here like this, you can go ahead and finish the tops, the covers, the tops and everything um, with your gaskets after you torque these all down. And uh, at that point in time, you can go ahead and start putting on the, um, the throttle body or manifold and carburetor, exhaust, all those things. And by the time you're done with that, the, the lifters should have had plenty of time to bleed down here on the other assembly. But again, it, this makes it so nice not to have to try to put this rocker box assembly on with it lofted way up in the air if you're sitting at a, a certain point on the cam lobe and take a chance of breaking bolts and whatnot. So again, 200 inch pounds for me. On the top. I'm going to go ahead and check these. And if we don't have any, a whole lot of oil in the lifters, they can bleed down pretty fast. So keep that in mind. Sometimes you, oh, geez, man, they didn't even open my valves. Well, they may have bled down pretty quick. It's like these barely did. Yeah. Tell, but they did open the valves. Yeah. So that's good if we got to see it a little bit there on, on the valves being open. I'm getting old, can't read these numbers. Okay, 140 inch, inch, inch pounds, not foot pounds. Okay, and I do 110 on these back. Good to go there. New gasket in the middle. That. Make sure we're in the channel there. It's very important. You don't want to go through this whole process and have one pop out and you tighten everything down and made your oil leak and now you're pissed. Again, just double check, make sure you change out your umbrella valves, make sure that is over our breather hole there. Just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and put this last gasket on. in the channel there. Okay, so then here's our front cover. We're going to go ahead and put this on here. Just make sure your gaskets, you can kind of align these with your fingers. And we have our four, four bolts here. For Allen's, and again, I torque these to 90 inch pounds. Don't get real crazy with them. You can strip these pretty easy as well. Keep in mind, we're only going into aluminum here.
in spot check just to make sure you got them lined where you need them. Make sure your gaskets aren't hanging out anywhere. These ones sat pretty nice and flush in there. You kind of a little out of time here. It's going to squish down all these gaskets, so it's not going to get super snug right away. So it's going to go. There we have it. Cover is on. So we'll go ahead and again you'll want to go ahead and double check on this rear one to make sure that you're not hitting if we're dealing with the specifically the 91 to 03s um, and the four speed so uh, 80, 86 to 03. On the 04 and later, it's a two-piece two cover, so it's set up a little bit differently. There's a little more uh, space between them instead of the three-piece cover. So 91 or uh, 86 to 03 is really the ones you want to be concerned with um, um, to double-check to make sure your rocker arms aren't hitting your tops there. Um, other than that, um, you know, the 04 and laters are usually pretty good, but it doesn't hurt, especially on some of our higher horsepower builds, 110 horse, 120 horsepower packages that you clear in some anyways to buy you some, some wiggle room there. Again, color them with a, a Sharpie just in case we have noise and we don't know uh, that it, that may be a possibility there or whatnot if it's a higher horsepower package. Other than that, that's about it uh, in a nutshell on how to put the rocker boxes on. It's biggest thing here is making sure at, you're at top dead center on the compression stroke when you're putting each rocker box assembly on and making sure that you let the motor sit for you know 30 minutes or so if you got time, take a break, whatnot, um, to let those you know lifters bleed down and valves close so that we don't you know have an issue there. Especially with bikes that have had the lifters in the bike that have been that you're not taking out and replacing with new lifters and trying to get the new ones to pump up. A lot of times they don't accept oil really really well the brand new ones even though you let them soak they don't fill all the way up but your your ones that are in your bike if you're not replacing lifters and whatnot in the bike they're pumped up okay so when you go ahead and tighten this all down they're going to open the valves right and it's going to take a while for them to bleed back down once you release the pressure on those lifters and whatnot they're going to pump right up so uh, just pay attention to that that's very important so we don't bend valves and whatnot other than that uh that's putting the rocker box assembly on in a nutshell um Again, thanks for watching. Comment down below. Um, yay, nay, that type deal. Hopefully it helps those that are, are putting their bikes together. Um, like us on Facebook. Uh, follow us on Instagram. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Peace out.